Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking through how to do an FRQ from 2024 for AP Physics C Mechanics. This is number two and it involves forces and a differential equation. So let's go ahead and get to it. This problem says there's a cylinder that's dropped and there is a drag force that's operating in the opposite direction of gravity on the cylinder as shown in the figure. The student models the magnitude of the drag forces to be equal to b v squared, where v is the speed of the cylinder and b is a positive constant with appropriate units. What this means is as the cylinder gets faster and faster, the force, the drag force, the resistive force gets greater and greater. And this makes sense. Similar things happen when people skydive out of an airplane. It makes sense that the air resistance or the drag force would be greater the faster the object was traveling, right? Okay, well, let's see where we go with this. This problem is actually a lot easier than it could be because they say derive but do not solve a differential equation that could be used to determine the speed v of the cylinder as a function of time t. Express your answer in terms of given quantities and physical constants as appropriate. All right, so let's talk through how to do this. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to draw a free body diagram here just off to the side. This is gonna be your drag force is gonna be going up and let's make down positive here. Let's make up negative. That actually is the opposite of what you learned when you're first learning physics, but that's typically how it's done for drag forces and for a lot of the more complex problems that we do in physics. And the strategy that I like to use that I've used for years with physics students is what I call the sum of the forces strategy. So what you do is you just write out the sum of the forces in that axis, literally add them up. So what do we have? Well, we have FG minus RF drag. And the second line for the sum of the forces strategy is to write the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration in that axis. That's Newton's second law. And because these two things are equivalent, we can set them equal to each other. And therefore we can say MG minus force drag is equal to m acceleration of the y and now it's really crucial that we substitute in what they have given us for the drag equation so we're going to say that's minus bv squared is equal to m times a in the y now here comes the really important thing the really important thing here is if they're talking about a differential equation differential equation that means we need to put one variable, typically velocity, and its derivative in the same equation. That's what we mean by a differential equation. So we're gonna sub in for a something very meaningful. Let me show you real quick. dv squared is equal to mass, and then we're gonna call this dv dt. So the derivative of the velocity function with respect to time is our acceleration function. We've just written it in a different way. And if you're able to do that, that's an easy three points right there. Easy peasy. Notice that we can just not even do, not even fully do the calculus here. Just set up the problem and get a bunch of points for this. So this problem isn't all that tough once you get the hang of setting things up like this. All right, let's move on to the next part of the problem and see what else we have to do. Okay, so for part B, it says the student correctly sketches the speed V of the cylinder as a function of time as shown. And this is a good visual reminder of what we're talking about when something reaches terminal velocity. That means its velocity eventually is going to level off. It doesn't mean that it stops in midair with zero velocity. It just means that it reaches some maximum velocity and doesn't increase past that. All right, so for part one, it says draw a vertical line in the sketch in the figure two to indicate the earliest time at which F drag on the cylinder is equal to the magnitude of the weight of the cylinder. Label this time as T1 on the time axis. Okay, and so what you're gonna to wanna to draw is a line kind of like this. You might wanna use the edge for your calculator to draw a straight line when you're asked to draw straight lines. So right around here, you can see that our velocity max is gonna be leveled off if it has a constant velocity. Oh, and we wanna label this as T1. That's what they've asked us to do here, so we have to be careful to do that. And then it says justify location of T1, reference appropriate features of the sketch, so we could say something like if the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero, which means the mg at that point is equal to bv squared. So I could bring in the former equation and show you what I'm talking about, but 
if your acceleration is equal to zero, then this is going to be a true statement here. So they are equal in magnitude to each other, just not in terms of direction. Okay, and moving on to part C, it says rather than dropping the cylinder from rest, the student throws the cylinder upward with a non-zero initial speed. Cylinder is in the same orientation as when the cylinder was previously dropped. The student allows the cylinder to fall to the ground. Indicate whether the magnitude of the cylinder's maximum downward speed after being thrown upward would be greater than, less than, or equal to the maximum speed previously. What do you think? Take a moment to take your best guess. All right, well, it's going to be equal to, right? Like, that's actually pretty easy. Nothing significant has changed from before in terms of, like, the shape of the cylinder or the mass of the cylinder or anything along those lines. One other way to justify this is if you throw something up like this with your V initial, once it gets up and comes back down, its speed, as its V final, you could say your V initial, is equal to the negative of your v final meaning they have the same value they have the same speed or magnitude you could say all right so if we were going to justify this we could say after throwing okay so while i think this is not the most important point to make they actually do make this as an example point in the grading key so i'm going to make that point right now Really, I think the biggest justification, though, is that the mass hasn't changed, or shape. The mass and the shape of the cylinder hasn't changed. So the mass and the shape of the cylinder hasn't changed, the air hasn't changed at all, it's still flowing through the same fluid, you could say. So there's no real reason for its terminal velocity to change as a result of this. So, just a way to think about this, let's go ahead and move on to D. Okay, so for D it says the student conducts an experiment to better understand the relationship between maximum speed and mass. The student collects data to determine the maximum speed for cylinders dropped from rest, each with the same physical size and shape at different mass. The student then graphs V max squared as a function of mass. Draw the best fit line for the data. Let's go ahead and quickly do that. Keep in mind you want to use a straight edge for this, like the edge of a calculator, or better yet, a ruler if you happen to have a ruler with you on the test day. Notice also that that best fit line does not need to, in fact it should not necessarily go through zero. A lot of problems will basically have the data not go through zero on purpose and then have you justify why that best fit line does not go through zero, like what experimental error caused that, so keep that in mind. In other words, don't make the line go through zero. Don't do that with your data. All right, so that's our best fit line. Also, there should be roughly the same amount of points on one side as there is on the other side of the line when you're drawing a best fit line. So for part two, it says use the best fit line to calculate an experimental value for B. All right, so we want to pick two points on the line, two points on the line, not two points from our data. This is a really important point. You will not get points if you pick two points from your data and the reason for that is we are much more confident of the general trends than we are of any individual data point so let's just try to pick two points here all right so i've got my two points picked here i've circled them on the graph this is my initial point over here and my final point and then i'm just going to calculate the slope really quickly Oh, and from my data down here, this needs to be 0 0.45, not 4.5. If I do the math here, I end up with a slope of 17. And it, we want to think about the units here, too. So we have meter squared per second squared times kilograms over here. So that's effectively what we could write. We could just write meter squared per second squared times kilograms for our units for the slope. Okay, and so taking a look at part two, it says use the best fit line to calculate an experimental value for B. This is not the y-intercept, although it is really powerful and really important to think about these equations in terms of the line equation and so on. What they're talking about is the coefficient that we had previously. So let's remind ourselves of what we had previously. At terminal velocity, at the maximum velocity, our acceleration is zero. So we said that mg is equal to bv squared. This is what they're talking about with this b here. So if you're going to isolate for b, you would say therefore mg over 
v squared is equal to b. And let's think about what we have here. Actually, it's more useful to think in terms of what we already have. Let's solve for the slope. Let's take it another way. And we're going to say, what do we have if we have v squared? That's on our y-axis. And if we have m down below, what is that equal to? So if we have v squared and m down below, that would be like dividing m on both sides over here and dividing b on both sides over here, right? b over here, b times m over here. That'll cancel out this b. And we'll be left with v squared over m is going to be equal to g over b. So what does that do for us? That tells us that our slope is going to be equal to g over b. So that's an important value. We did solve for slope previously. I got 17 with my data. Okay, so we can say therefore our b value is equal to g over our slope, right? So that's what we're looking for is b. So we would say, all right, well, that's minus 9.81 over the slope value. The slope value I got was 17. We end up with an answer in kilograms per meters. That actually turns out to be correct. And then for my data, I ended up with 0 0.577, which is within the acceptable range. Yeah, so that's how you would go about doing this. I will say this is a really important FRQ to understand all of the basics of how to approach these problems. Really, really helpful FRQ because it just hits every major idea you need to know how to do for one of these style problems. This is a very common style problem for an AP Physics E Mechanics FRQ. All right, so let's move on. Let's finish this off. Okay, and so for part E, it says a student claims the magnitude of the maximum speed of the cylinder dropped from rest depends on the length. So it's going to depend on the length of the cylinder. The student designs an experiment to collect data that can be used to provide evidence to support the claim. Student drops cylinders with the orientation shown. The student has access to, but does not have to use all of the following equipment. So you've got your set one, your set two, set one has the same known length with different masses. Set 2 has the same mass, same known mass, but different lengths. That's what we're going to want because we're going to vary the length. What we're looking to test is going to be whether or not the final velocity is dependent on the length. So we do want our length as our independent variable, or you could say our manipulated variable. And then it's really important to think about what would go on the y-axis. Remember, that's going to be our dependent variable or you could say your responding variable, depending on how you've learned this. And this is gonna be the velocity, like V max, we could say, needs to be the dependent variable here. So we're gonna need the second set. Let's see what the question says. Indicate two quantities that when graph could be used to determine whether the length of the cylinder affects the maximum speed. Okay, vertical axis, yeah, we definitely want the maximum speed. We could call that V max down below here horizontal axis, we're going to graph the length. That's the thing that we're varying. This part of the problem has some experimental design thrown in, which is something that you are going to see on the test itself as well. All right, so part two says, briefly describe how the quantities graph could be used to determine the relationship between cylinder length and maximum speed. Okay, so an easy answer for this would be to say something like the slope of this graph will demonstrate if there is a, a relationship or not. And that's it. I've done screencasts on an entire year of physics and most of the concepts for AP Physics E Mechanics. If you have any questions or comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.